I'm hoping for some exotic brews. Yes. All right, well, we do not know their deck list yet, but we will shortly. Um, Chris Van Meter, a Star City Games level eight. Definitely one of the regulars versus Alex Lapping. Uh, not sure yet what decks they're playing. Chris actually won the Legacy Open, I guess that was three tournaments ago, playing the blue-white Snapcaster deck, and that was the first tournament where you could play Snapcaster Mage and Legacy at one of these open events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he made excellent use of Riptide Lab with that one, obviously. To uh, One of my favorite cards ever. Mm -hmm. Same. It's a little good now that they actually print good wizards, especially good wizards with Crimson play abilities, but it's only legal in formats where it's fine. So. Before Worlds, when I wanted to play in a Steve Smato Blue Wizard deck one time, I needed to find Riptide Labs, and it was impossible. I was freaking out that I wasn't going to be able to find it. Oh, here we have a turn one Jataxian Probe from Alex. So it looks like we have green-white tokens. That's a Micaeus. So yeah, we're looking at Chris Van Meter playing green-white tokens, possibly Jews' style, versus Alexander Lapping, who, by playing a turn one Jataxian Probe, and there's still a lot of things he could be playing, but... It makes me think he's playing the, uh, the blue-white claw blade, sort of, you know, the uh, the stone blade build with, not stone blade, I guess just blue-white blade these days. You know, setting up the turn two Snapcaster Mage by Jataxian Probe as a silver gill adept. Now, is that, that's, that's green? Interland Harbor. Interland Harbor is Interesting. green. It looked like he had, it looked like, was that a birthing pot I saw in his hand? Ooh, spicy brew. We have, I like it. I like I it also. Like it. That's an Oculus. Nobody has Oculus in the top three cards of the library if they're not worth a potty. That's, that's true. That is definitely. Are we sure that's an Oculus? Uh, sure. I don't know if I would say sure. But as a guy who's drawn a lot of Oculus, <laughs> <since> his day, <laughs> I'm all too intimately familiar with Doc Ock. So yeah, to whatever like whatever Alex is playing, like even though he's just showing Hinterland Harbor Island, Chris knows that a turn two Micaeus is just going to be fantastic. You know, just ticking up, becoming a bigger and bigger threat, so that whenever he sticks something that's producing some tokens, it's like an Ajani with suspend. You know, in a lot of ways, that's what Micaeus really is: is a suspend. It's like I mean, you could just play it as an Ajani that doesn't have some, that has summoning sickness later, but early on you can suspend it. I like thinking about it like that. All right, so what are we working with here? Oh wow, yeah, this he is, is a grand a, architect. Yeah, he's a grand. Well, he's got the birthing pods. Yeah, but he's a grand architect birthing pod player. That's really interesting. Complete with treasure mage package. Uh, and I've always loved Snapcaster Mage with uh, birthing pod. You know, he doesn't have a lot of targets though for it. Just the probes and ponders. It's really interesting. And then he also, he doesn't really, he's not green, he's mono blue. The four hinterland harbors are just to prevent a little damage from the uh, birthing pod. He doesn't have any green cards. It's really interesting. And he's making good use of Buried Ruin, which is kind of exciting. You know, I've always liked Buried Ruin with Mind Slaver and Worm Coil Engine and, and so on. And the Metamorph, obviously. Kind of an exciting brew. I mean, one round one, too. This mm -hmm. thing's pretty awesome. Chris Van Meter, on the other hand, is um, he's pretty close to uh, some kind of a, a stock green white tokens deck. The uh, the only spice um, he's got one Elish Norn to top out his curve. Um, he is playing uh, the the overrun style. You know, he's only got one Geist Honored Monk, um, but uh, all in all, fairly standard. You know, he's, he is playing Blade Splicers instead of Mirror... Oh, he has Mirror Crusaders also, so he's playing the mix. He's playing a lot less one-drops than we're used to seeing out of that deck. Just the four Pilgrims and four Birds? Mm -hmm. um, if you watch the Magic Online premiere event results, uh, Megzors has 4 would about half of the uh, premiere events recently, playing 15 one-drops and 10 five-drops in our green-white decks. So, looks like Alexander has got Birthing Pod in action. He's upgraded to, he's got Spell Skite now, he's got, is that Grand Architect? 
So, Grand, Grand Architect, Grand Birthing Architect. Pod, and Spellskite facing down a Machaeus, a Blade Splicer, a Token, and uh, and he's well aware that Meter's Hand had a good mix of spells and, uh, you know, a fairly good curve. So, what's Alex got to get down now? Now that he's got the Grand Architect, and he's got Spellskite to protect his Grand Architect from a potential O-Ring, or his Oblivion Ring from an O-Ring, what is Alexander trying to set up? Because this is like his deck working here, right? Like, he's got yes. Architect and Birthing Pod going. What's um, next? I mean, can he just Mind Slaver and activate it next turn? He has Mind Slaver in his hand. He has Mind Slaver in his hand? Yeah. Oh, wow. Does he have a land? Because he's got uh, four, five, six, seven. There's he's one on the top of his deck, right? He's, well, he's only showing it? seven mana. Because, like, Mind Slaver costs ten to use. Okay. He's got four land. The Architect is two more is six. The spell sky makes one is seven. Seven, and right. then so I think he's got. I think he's a turn away. See, oh, okay, yeah, he's a turn away. You're right. Now, now he can birthing pod, uh, and theoretically get a blue creature, and get one more mana. He can actually net a mana that way. To get up. To yeah, eight. and you can use the artifact mana from the guys to activate the birthing pod also. So I think that. Uh, well, most likely, yeah, he would just pay the, and he would just pay the life. Yeah, he just use a colorless and. Yeah, I think he's. I, th I still think he's a turn away. Now we're gonna see this redirected to the spell skate, surely, right? Yes. Alexander's definitely gonna be facing down a lot of pressure, so he's probably gonna need to produce something that can affect the board pretty quickly here. Um, it's. Is that a? That is a worm coil in his hand too, right? Because if he just drops worm coil next turn, he's in real good shape. He lets it go. Wow, what does that mean? Well, I mean, here he is. I, it almost seems like Chris wanted him to let that go from his perspective. Because here Chris is. Chris did not attack with the Golem before he cast that Oblivion Ring. And Alex probably... that That's a bit confusing. If somebody didn't attack with their, you know, with their onboard trick guy who kills my 4 and their other guy before casting their Oblivion Ring. Like, no, you no, give your opponent an opportunity to No, no you can just block the 1-1. One, one. If he figures that for sure... So that wants to get it out of the way. Yeah. I, but another thing is, maybe he's thinking, if I have Spell Sky and Worm Coil on the table, this is locked up. That may be. That may actually... It may just be that he doesn't need to get fancy, because all he was going to use the Birthing Pod for... But maybe the Birthing Pod... Yeah, because I guess... He's got another birthing pot in his hand anyway. It's interesting. Maybe he just needs to conserve his life total. From the looks of it, I mean, that's the type of play. You don't make that play at random. He's obviously got a lot of experience with his deck, and that's the sort of thing where... And he would deliberate about it for a second to make sure that's what he wanted to do. Chris, I, got, I know, is going to be at least a little concerned. You know, anybody who lets the birthing pot go after thinking about it? Like, what does this mean? I would be confused. But, well, I mean, it's not clear that Chris could actually beat a worm coil in this position. All things considered, this looks like it's going to potentially shape up to be a, kind of a challenging matchup for Chris when he doesn't draw one of those one drops, one of those crucial one drops to give him the speed to get ahead of this. Because Chris doesn't have an answer to Architect. And if you just let an Architect live, bad things happen. And Alex has um, four spell skites. Yeah, I think that's like probably one of his primary game plans against both red decks and uh, wolf run. You know, being able to redirect that wolf run activation. Because otherwise, a deck like his that has no counter spells or removal is going to have such you know trouble with with that uh, that end game. So, what does Chris need to do to turn this around? Because this is. This is going to get out of hand rough. very quickly. Um, I guess like, Elspeth into an overrun. He's got Gavani Township now. So his, his guys are getting like grind bigger. Yeah, like it seems like if he just gets so big, so much stuff that's just so much value that he could actually just power through the one coil engine. That's tough. The death touches and it makes it <laughs> real <laughs> tough. It's like a six for one already. And what's yeah. going to make it even worse <laughs> is that he doesn't know Alexander from the looks of it, Alexander's hand is full of gas. He's got a scab, ruinator, he's got... Yeah, and Alex can also just 
slaver him and then just destroy well, that's him. that's going to be it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I think the, the combination of worm coil, like just making guys run into the worm coil and, you know, this is... very ruin it back. Yeah, this is... Like, I don't think we're necessarily going to see the Mind Slaver on the next turn, but the turn after that, we're going to see Mind Slaver into Mind Slaver on two consecutive turns. Yeah, with the Buried Ruin in play? This is, yeah, like you said, this is this is going to be, uh, this is rough. What is, what is if Chris, Chris doesn't have, Chris has three O-rings, so that's not a lot of, not a lot of main deck answers to this position. Yeah, from the looks of it, it's definitely just try to commit as much power and toughness to the board, hope Alexander doesn't have any more, and grind through the worm coil. Yeah, draw an overrun. The problem is that he's going to have to face down, like already on board, he sees that he's going to have to beat Worm Coil and Buried Ruin the Worm Coil. But he also is going to be wanting to get a little more information about Alexander's deck. Because he knows, like he knows this is already, you know, he's in real bad shape. Mm. Metamorph, presumably copying a Worm Coil engine. Maybe copying Micaeus. Be interesting if Chris doesn't tap the chaos here and put counters on everything. Seems like you gotta like if you're Chris, you gotta just tap and put a counter on everything, right? I don't know. I think. Or is Micaeus only at one? Micaeus is only at one right now. Oh, so then you wait. But he does have the township, so it can pump every guy every turn. It is. Oh right. All I meant is that if the metamorph copies the Micaeus. He won't have time to respond. Yes. It's that's it. If you ask what it is. It's like you can ask somebody what they're naming with their uh, cabal therapy and then counter it. <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah. Looks like it was in fact the worm coil. And now he drops another broken pod. Yeah, things are definitely officially out of hand. This matchup doesn't look like it's where Chris wants to be, but he's going to need a one-drop if he's going to make a good go at it, you know. Obviously, Alexander isn't going to draw Architect every game, but he's going to draw it at least half, you know, about half the time. Oh, so he didn't even keep the Architect. Yeah, what's he needed for? He just makes another Worm Coil, right? Yeah. This is, this is uh, a board that it looks like he, he knows that Chris wanted to just try to grind him out at this point, and there's no way in the world he's beating three Worm Coils with a Spell Sky and a Buried Ruin. I'm not sure why he doesn't just attack with one of the Worm Coils there. That's true, why not? Right, like... And you have two more guys on defense. Yeah, you Plus, got, this is a, a get, sweet get little 12-point 12, 12 swing, yeah. Oh no, there's enough first strike damage, right? Is that a Mirren Crusader and a, a Blade Splicer token? Yeah, on the far right. There's enough first right. strike damage that you just throw it away. See, but in that case, then I would want to keep the architect around until I could slave her away some of that stuff. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, to get enough mana to actually slaver him. Seems like once you get rid of your architect, the dream of slavering him. Alright. Another mirror consider. Chris continuing to just commit as much as he can to the board. I mean, as long as he's got Gavani Township and Micaeus, he's going to be gaining value every turn. Mm -hmm. You know, this is... His army is going to get really, really big. And there is the slaver. I guess Alexander just figures he can do it over the course of two turns because... And that's like, fine. What's the rush? Chris's team is about to go on a Berserker charge into three Worm Coil engines. <laughs> it's kind of a scary thing. Imagine hanging out, like, you know, three of your friends and like a golem, you know, <laughs> and you have to you have to go fight these <laughs> these three gargantuan metallic hell beasts. Yeah, but you probably not think about it at the time, seeing as you're a slave. You yeah. know, you might, you're mentally just <laughs> Slave to Chris Van Meter. 
doing his bidding. Oh, I meant slaved Alexander Lapping at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mind slavery. <laughs> Treading one kind of bondage for another. <laughs> so, speaking of bondage, what do we have in the sideboards for these guys? <laughs> Chris, it looks like, um, has, I guess, two naturalizes and an O ring, which he'll surely bring in. Yes. Um, he's probably wishing that that naturalize was a revoke existence right about now, but you know, you, you work with what you got. Take what you can get. Um, um, ring comes out. I think he's going to bring the Garuk Rockless, the extra copy, because that's his answer to Grand Architect. He that's might... a good answer to Grand Architect, too. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. And it's also, it, you know, it's not an unreasonable answer for Spell Sky. You know, you can attack with a Blade Splicer, and he'll block, the, he'll block with his Spell Sky, and then you can play Garak and. You can actually kill spell guides that way, also. I actually like Fiend Hunter out of his board too. I would bring in Fiend Hunter, Hunter also. Fantastic against. I mean, it's an answer to War Architect. Mm -hmm. It's an answer to Worm Coil Engine. Um, and what's really important is that Chris needs to. He needs to be able to get this removal, but he needs to be able to do so in like a redundant fashion that allows him to get the spell guide out of the way. Yeah. Especially, he doesn't even realize, he doesn't even know how many spell skites he's up against there. But yeah, naturalize is going to help too there, just if, if nothing else, because the naturalize can clear the way so that the O-ring can actually hit something. Um, and he's got plenty, I mean, he can cut some of the slow stuff, you know, like he's going to be able to take out Alish Noor, and he's going to be able to take out, um, I'm not even sure that these Mirror Crusaders are that good for him. They might be, just because the first strike might be so crucial for getting past one coils. Elspeth Terrell might be a little slow. I'm not See, sure. I think the Mortar plan... Pod can go for sure. Yes, Mortar Pod. I think yeah, Alish Norn and the two Mortar Pods, out. I think, can all go. How many cards do we think he's bringing in? I would bring in Primal Hunter, too. Yeah, I guess why not? Like, Alexander's deck doesn't look that good against Planeswalkers. Okay, so. Uh... Alright, Alexander just. Uh... Now it's, it's his turn. We, we, it to, looks like uh, we're about to see Alexander finally uh, slave from Chris Van Meter. Finally, uh, Slav. Oh, no. Oh, with the rush, right? Just hang out. Now he can I don't know if I agree with that. He puts him down on a clock, and what's the worst that could happen? Chris has only got one card in hand. If it's an O-ring, and he draws another O-ring, then he gets the slaver? But, I mean, oh, he's, he can just slave him now. He uh, he upgraded the uh, he used birthing pod to upgrade the uh, spell skite into an architect. Spell skite into an architect, and then uh... all right. Chris says, "Well, do your worst. At least all of my guys will be huge." That's interesting. Looks like Garuk is going to kill one of his own guys. Yeah. The problem here, of course, is that Alexander has lethal on the table. So all he has to do is make Chris attack with everything. And then he wins. As long as Alexander doesn't die on the attack and gets to keep... I mean, he's going to have warm coil guys anyway. So Yeah, yeah I mean, he's, he's not going to die on the attack. He has 18 points of life link. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it is possible to slaver your opponent, do it wrong, and make them kill you. It's very embarrassing. No, Brian DeMars was in a Type 1 match where, involving Juggernaut and Mind Slaver. That was uh, particularly awkward. Notable. Brian DeMars, uh, top 50 the PT, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, uh, he either... Either top 32 or he might have even top 16. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I think he top. I, I, I know I saw him doing a while. Maybe top 50. I don't know. Yeah, he definitely. He definitely. I, uh, I know he finished. Uh, finished high enough there. to to, to yeah. parlay it. Okay, on so the last one that you can. So worm coils all over the place. Mm -hmm. All he has to do is live through the attack. Even if the worm coils die, he's going to have enough guys to just swing back and finish him off. He's explaining it to Chris. And Chris packs it in. Yeah. 
What are we seeing out of uh, Alexander's sideboard? All right, so Alexander has Ratchet Bombs, Dismembers, Flash Freezes, some extra Snapcasters, and Negates. That's a great sideboard for this matchup, right? Ratchet Bomb seems pretty good. Ratchet Bomb seems fantastic for this. Yes. And, uh, I mean, do you think, like, even Dismember? Like, the fact that he's seen Hero of Whitehold, which is probably a problem card for him, and Micaeus, and sometimes even just hitting a guy, do you think he'll bring in Dismembers, or do you think he can't afford to dilute his engine too much? Um... I kind of want two dismembers in the main. <laughs> yeah, I think dismembers. Dismember seems hot. I don't even know. I don't know for sure if you bring them all in, but I would like a little bit of dismember here. Definitely like as much ratchet bomb as possible. Yes, I what want about? all of the ratchet bombs. I I like having the one mind slaver. You know, the the, dis, the dismember seems. Fin He's even got the snapcaster mage action. Adding dismember seems like a great fit. I think scab Ruin ruinator can come out. You don't think he's gonna birthing pot up the Ruinator often enough? I like the Ruinator on defense, like holding, like it is a three drop you can get that that shuts down the attack. You know, I keep the Ruinator anyway. It adds a different dimension. I'd rather have the Ruinator than like, you know, like for instance. I mean, I feel like you can trim on stuff like you can trim on Oculus, you birthing can trim pot. on Spell Skite, you can trim on the Taxian Probe, you can. It's tough because his deck, his main deck is, is all the cards are fine. Yeah. But yeah, so probably he, probably he's not going to need you know like flash freeze for instance. Mm -hmm. It's not bad, but or but it's not gonna. It doesn't do what you need, right? Like whereas Ratchet yeah, Bomb is member. much more focused for. Like, I'm sure he has that card for the Wolf Run decks. Yeah. In mono red. But. Yeah. So Ratchet Bomb and dismember. Which Some is not good for him. <laughs> What's that? Mono red. Oh, yeah, Mono Red seems like it would be real tough for him. He's got Spellskite, though. Yeah, and you know, they're not bolting anymore. Like, they're shocking. He's, he's Grand Architecting into he's, Worm Coil Engines, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He's probably it's, fine. It's, I mean, they're going to board in Dismember, but, um, yeah, I don't know. A lot of these red decks I've been seeing don't even have Incinerate in them either. Have to Brimstone Volley it or something. That's kind of crazy. Not, not playing, playing Incinerate? You're playing Shock, but not Incinerate? That's the world we live in? I... I mean, I, I do know. it too. When I play Red decks, not Mono Red. Mono Red, I like Incinerate still, but... I like both, but... 15%! <laughs> incinerate! 15% what? Of their life total. Oh! <laughs> the thing I like, it depends. I think if you're gonna use it as removal, you know, like Galvanic Quest or Shock, um, often is better because two is sort of the common, you know, I mean, one is extremely common also. Mm -hmm. But there's the sort of debate of, you know, uh, Geist Flame versus Gut Shot versus Galvanic Quest slash Shock. The nice thing about Shock and Galvanic Quest is being able to hit all those same things, but instead of having the backdoor value from Geist, you know, of, you know, the Geist Flame of getting it later, or the blowout of getting it, you know, for free when it matters from Gut Shot. You have the ability to do things like hit, you know, uh, uh, Mirror Crusader. That's the big one to me, you know. Mirror Crusader is a very scary card. Standard. I think. What do you, do you think Chris is going to take those out here? Well, Mortar Pods definitely coming out. Two Mortar Pods and an Elish Norn, and for an sure. Elish Norn, for sure. And I like bringing in Fiend Hunter, both Garooks, both, Garook, both Naturalizes, both and an O-Ring. And an O-Ring, so it's six cards. Yeah, so I guess... And we have three cuts so far. Maybe Geist Honored Monk is too slow? I don't know. I kind of like Cloud Goat Ranger against those kind of decks. Right? Is it big enough? Well... It, it doesn't it, beat a worm coil. Like it doesn't. It's not cloud goat. It doesn't fly over. It flies over for two. But with like the overrun effects, the flyers are pretty good. Yeah, flyers are good. And I don't think he can really be on the plan of like, how can I beat a, re a resolved worm coil? I think he has but to. I, mean, I don't think he can stop him. From, but we will see. 
He's, I would predict he trims a little bit of the expensive stuff, just because, and maybe Elspeth, maybe he keeps the Geist and he cuts an Elspeth or something, but I just like Planeswalkers in this kind of a matchup. But he does have that one drop that we talked about that's so crucial. Yes. Yeah, you were talking, you said, you mentioned he doesn't have as many one drops as some of the other green-white builds, but uh, it's definitely going to work better now that he has them. So he has at least one Mirror Crusader in his deck. Still has and, one. Uh, the turn two Mirror Crusader is a much more aggressive clock than the turn two Mikaeus. Although Doc Ock has. Uh, That's actually a up. pretty obnoxious thing to have to fight when you play a Mirror Crusader. Yeah. You can't even attack with the Pilgrim either. It's so obnoxious. It just prevents five damage here. And now he doesn't even have to block with it. So sick. Things are definitely Oculus. Alright. The perfect curve. This yes. is this is what these green white decks aspire to do. Literally, the pilgrim and the crusader and the hero is their best draw. Yeah. And this is exactly what he wanted to see here too. Hopefully, for Alexander's sake, he has one of those dismembers that we talked about. From the looks of it, not so much. So. Birthing Pod, use it, paying for life. Dropping to 12. He gets the Ruinator. Okay. So the Ruinator is going to eat the hero, but... Um, and Alex gets to draw a card after this? Is that how the ordering works? No, you have to draw the card first. If you draw a card at all. It's a May. Yeah, it is a May. Okay. So now, if he eats the hero, he's going to take six from the Crusader, two from the Pilgrim, four from the other tokens. That's 12. So he can't even eat the hero. He has to eat the Crusader. If well, he can't eat the Crusader now, either. That's a Gavany Township. Oh, wow. So now... Yeah, Chris just attacks with hero and mirror Crusader. Even if he chumps the Crusader... No, it's not even chumping. So if he eats... He does fight the Crusader, but he'll take... One, two, three, four, well, five, no, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten, eleven, two. No, no, no. Four first strike. Four first. It, the Scavernator is a three four, right? No. Oh, Scavernator is only a six seven. It's a six seven. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the. Yes. So if Chris attacks and does the pumping we described, Alexander will be at two, and his Ruinator will uh, trade with the uh, Mirror and Crusader. Not seem very good for him. Um, it could be worse. He could be dead on board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what does he need to do to turn this around? Like he's got Ratchet Bomb in his hand, but this is obviously Ratchet Bomb is the wrong card for for this draw. You know, like Ratchet Bomb is more against the token element. He um, we can play during Architect. Next, but he does have a Birthing Pot in play, so. The problem, though, is that it's just going to spiral out of control. I mean, not only is he, he may eat the Crusader, I mean, he may trade with the Crusader. Yeah, see, he's going to trade with the Crusader, but he's still going to be facing down seven guys in, like, 35 power next turn. Oh, he's just dead, right? Now he's just dead. He's Does dead. he not see it? Yeah. yeah, now he's just dead on board. That was the, uh, that was not yeah. the block. 6 plus 8 is 14. Yeah. He's dead. Negative 2. So it looks like regular damage finally resolved. First strike yeah. damage was the, uh, the startling point, I guess. So... After a grindy game one, we see Chris completely dominant. Was that a turn five kill? Yes. Turn four kill? Turn four. It was a turn four kill through resistance. Like yes. through Architect, Birthing Pod, Oculus. Uh, Oculus. Yeah. Scabberinator. Yep, both of these players' um, decks are capable of producing some really, really good, good draws, you know? And Chris and is Alex opening. did Fire Blast himself. Yeah. Odd. But he had to. Chris's uh, Chris's game one hand was certainly good against a regular blue deck, 
But this is a very, very different style of blue than, than we've been seeing. Now Alexander gets the playback again. What's he going to be looking for? Like, what's his... I mean, I guess we saw that game one, his good draw, right? Like, Architect into Birthing Pot into Worm Coil. But he probably I mean, wants to lead. Ratchet Bomb? Mm -hmm. He plays a Ratchet Bomb on two on the play? All right. Even a spell scout on two is also really powerful. Yeah, can buy himself some time and protects him from the inevitable naturalizes and O-rings that we see, you know? I definitely think Chris needs to continue to try to be as fast as possible, you know? You want he that really wants to one drop. Oh, man. I would mulligan to it on the draw, especially. The I don't think you can keep a hand without a one drop. Yeah, I mean, it, the, I guess the, the hand without a one drop that you'd have to keep would be something like... Because he doesn't even have any two drops in his deck. You know? Like, he's got Micaeus. But I guess if you didn't have a one drop, you'd really want a Micaeus into a three drop with several removal spells to follow, you know, to follow it up. Like a Garuk and then like an, an O-Ring and a Naturalizer. Thing. I really want to play more one drops in Chris's deck. Yeah, Chris's deck seems like it'd be perfect to have like two Lanor Elf. I mean, obviously you prefer the birds and the pilgrims, but he's already playing those. And every game he has a one drop just seems like he's a turn ahead. You know, it's just so much. Yeah, the difference between having a one drop and not having a one drop in this three drop heavy deck list is it, it, pretty huge. Right, like, because it's not even just one turn, it's like two in a lot of ways, because you're not doing anything with your second turn otherwise. Yeah, you're like Let water your potting or like casting Micaeus, you're suspending your Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. And that not applying pressure. Yeah, I think you either got to play more two drops or you got to play more one drops. Like, I think, I don't know, this is just, I guess maybe you don't have to, but that just seems a little bit like, I don't know, I, I, don't want, I wouldn't want a chance not getting a one drop. All right, so is Alexander taking a mulligan? Um, it looks like Alexander is taking a mulligan. That is definitely not what he wants to see. But his deck probably mulligans pretty well. I mean, when your deck has such powerful things it can be doing, like grand and architect, one color. Or, and it's yeah, he's always going to have his color. He's he's got really powerful effects that produce more than a card's worth of value. You know, like architect or birthing pod or worm coil. All of his cards are really good. This deck's good. Uh, I'm with you on the first half for sure. Um, I don't think the deck's necessarily bad. I I think that I there it could be tuned. I'm not sold uh, that this is the best positioned deck. Because I think these Architect decks are so, like, they're, they're, they're cool and they can be really good on the right weekend when you pick the exact right spot where, you know, because it keeps fluctuating which decks people are playing. This isn't the type of deck that I think you just want to power through everybody, where it just becomes one of the pillars of the format. This is more of a, if the right matchups uh, are in place, then he's got, uh, then he's pretty well positioned. But in general, I mean, do you like the style of, of deck against, like, say, uh, like uh, a blue deck, for instance? Uh, blue white, I'm not so sure about. I mean, the blue, blue black. That's probably a little worse. I don't know. Yeah, because I, I don't like his deck against blue decks. But I think that as long as he faces against all these green and white decks, and mono white and uh, not mono white like white blue destiny. Yeah, white blue destiny is good for Wolf him. Wolf run, um, you know all Wolf that. Wolf run's good for him too. I think mean, he's actually finding it's red. Spell skites, Oculus, worm coils. That's enough for him. Yeah, he's got a lot of sweet action. So, Chris Van Meter definitely looking for a one drop, as he has no other, two, he has no two drops either. Alexander leading off Island Ponder. Now, what's he looking for? He's mostly looking for Architect, right? Like, yeah. I mean, these decks, Architect is always the best card in their deck by a lot. I mean, like, it's their Bitter Blossom, where their deck is just a totally different deck when they have it. 
Oh, he's got the blinged out Oculuses. Absolutely. This is the turn to your Ratchet Bomb. That's a pretty Birds of Paradise. Absolutely. He does not play the Ratchet Bomb. He plays Oculus. That seems so bizarre to me. Why would you not play? I don't know. I mean, it's... Don't you want... You leave with the Ratchet Bomb. And yeah, the because the Oculus, like, it's not like it's going to block a bird. Uh, you get him for a point. That seems so not the important battle. So, Chris gets to stick a Blade Splicer here, right? Yeah. And I think he might just have, like, Perfect Curve again. And Blade Splicer is, uh... Oh, does he have one in his hand? Uh, Doesn't look another, like it. Yeah, I don't see another white mana. So, like, he's he is he's cut off from one. a lot of his options. Uh, are we about to see Alexander just? Like, uh, there are twelve lands that come into play on tap and produce white for. Wow! So he plays the Pilgrim instead of the Blade Splicer. Huh? What's the uh, what's the theory on this one? Maybe Hero yeah. Bladehold is that good. Maybe he thinks That's his true. opponent doesn't have a way to kill it. So, Alexander's about to drop this. You know, Alexander can threaten to drop, I guess, Ratchet Bomb, looking at that two for one. But now he's going to be facing down a Hero Bladehold. And he, he's got to imagine that that's what's happening right here. Like, why would he. I mean, he's not showing another white. Play Spell Skin. He must just be saving Ratchet Bomb for zero. That's the that's the thing. He's just already committed in his mind that he's going to be ratchet bombing for zero. Chris had the uh, end step naturalize, so he's able to uh, take advantage of that mana that he didn't tap the turn before. Oh, okay. And that uh, there's that hero we talked about. Doesn't have another land though, so he can't actually activate his township yet. But any land off the top is good enough to start activating the township, and uh, a township with heroes. Pretty vicious. So we're about to see Oculus become a scab ruinator, I think. I always love the uh, when you birth and pot away Oculus looking for the ruinator. Every time you get a little rush as you hope that the card you draw isn't the ruinator. Yeah. <laughs> Used to come up all the time with Ur Urobrask. So <laughs> You're playing against Twin and you like you, you get rid of the Solemn Simulacrum. And you're like, I'm going to draw the card anyway. I don't care. I want that little rush thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a pretty big game. Yeah. Scab Ruin here with Birthing Pod to give him more action. You know, like, Chris can't just attack into this. He doesn't have another land for the township to start building an, an army. You know, like, this is a brick wall. He did get rid of the spell skate though, which makes the Ruinator, you know, not more susceptible. Yet. So now I mean he He can also there's you know, there's attack with everything, lose your hero, and then Garuk and lose your Garuk also. It's an ugly way to have to do it, but you can't just let the Ruinator sit and play. And it may also just be that he's tanking because he has O ring and he's deciding which is the bigger threat. But Ruinator. in his heart of hearts he'd probably just hit the Ruinator, get in there and If you have O ring, you have to just get rid of the Ruinator, especially if you, your whole plan was yeah. the hero. Like you're, you're leaning on that hero really hard in this matchup. So, I mean, obviously we see what Alexander's plan is. He has locked up the board with uh, the Ruinator, and he threatens to gain value every turn with Birthing Pod. What's Chris's plan to get through this? I mean, obviously we don't, we don't, we're not privy to what's in his hand, but. Presumably, Blade Splicer comes down, right? Because he doesn't have the other land yet. Oh, he doesn't have the Rook. He is debating that exact play of the throw away everything to get to kill your Ruinator. But that's such a tough way to go because like Alexander already has a Spell Sky and an Oculus in the graveyard. If he plays a creature, sacks it to Birthing Pod, the Ruinator's coming back. You don't want to kill the Ruinator with damage. That's not the way to do it. You want to array it. You do. Or you want Chris to just is not thinking about it. everything. There's the Mirror Crusader this time. 
I never really got down with the undisciplined tapping of the forest instead of the Gavani Township. It hurts my eye. Every time hurts me. You know, you holding that green up representing whatever you don't really yeah. play. But... The, the Rangers guy. Sure. <laughs> it's a small leak, but it's a leak. Alright, so Alexander plays the Ratchet Bomb. This time ensuring, I guess, that the, uh, the tokens don't come down. But he's thinking at this point that he's got time. He's going to tick it up to one and hit those mana creatures. And completely stunned Chris with growth. Yeah, because I mean, Chris is going to be in a lot of trouble if he's only got two lands in play here. Yeah. So one of the things he's probably considering at this point is the uh, the just rook make a guy. As if I, I like that play. He does have another land. Oh. Even if he goes Garuk make a guy. Um, the nice thing is that even if the Ratchet, I mean the Ratchet Bomb, even if it kills the Pilgrim and the Bird next turn, he'll still be able to cast that, that Blade Splicer in his hand that we think he has in his hand. Yeah, the Blade Splicer uh, next turn with his land. So the other thing he might be debating though is that obviously he might want to take advantage he can of the just, yeah, yeah, I mean Ajani everybody. He can just crack right now with Crusader and Hero and then activate Township. It's not the worst play. I like just attacking with this Mirror Crusader. <laughs> so Alex would know better than I, but I actually don't mind just trading here. Maybe not. Maybe he just needs to be holding back the hero. The problem is I, I don't think he holds back the hero next turn. You know? Like, I don't think that... I think next turn his life total will be, will be low enough that... Like, I think you just have to trade here. So, Alexander, about to ratchet bomb away Chris's... You know, the, the, a good chunk of Chris's mana. Yeah. But if you're going to be left with only one thing, there are a lot worse things to be left with than a hero of a white hole. Alexander actually has two birthing pods now, right? Well, no, I think that's a ratchet bomb and a yeah, ratchet Not bomb. birthing pod. I meant two yeah. ratchet bombs. Yeah, he has two ratchet bombs. Which is pretty strong here. Oh, now he's going to ponder, too? Looking for a creature to sacrifice to that birthing pod. It's a grand architect. Metamorph copying the hero. It's actually a very powerful play because even though the uh, like the Chris's hero is bigger to begin with, the Ratchet Bomb exactly the Ratchet makes Bomb the math zero. different. Yeah. I mean, he can even eat one token now just by blocking with his with his hero, and then. Um, mm -hmm crack back for a million and not die on the next swing because of the uh, the Ratchet Bomb. We talked about how powerful Ratchet Bomb is just in these tactical situations. So often it's the threat of using it. You don't even have to use it. And that's exactly what Alex does. So. Blade Splicer, which is very <laughs> mild. Yeah, it's yes. not really the way you want to fight the other guy's Ratchet Bomb that's sitting on zero, but... It is something, you know, like you gotta do something. Yeah, I mean, you're. I mean, it's an extra two points coming in next turn. Well, and, and the token could potentially threaten to block. If the token, yeah. the golem, you know, can, if nothing else, eat a, uh, eat a soldier if the hero attacks. And the Grand Architect, he now has Ratchet Bomb, Architect, a, cop, a Metamorph, and a Birthing Pod. So every, I mean, this is just. It's all coming together for Alexander here. We talked about how uh, how important it is for Chris to come, cur you know, curve out aggressively. And in this game, he did have the one drop, but he missed a three drop on two. You know, and he really needs to go one, three, four. 
You know, and whether that four is Hero or Garuk, or whether that three is Crusader or Blade Splicer, or whether the one is a Pilgrim or Bird, he needs to go one, three, four. Yeah, in this matchup. In this matchup. Yeah. yeah. So he decides to get very aggressive. That's that is very aggressive, if you ask me. Yes. But he's at ten life. He's facing lethal on board. Like, like if Chris, Chris just draws a land, he spell. just garrics and it's gonna dies, right? I mean, presumably Alexander could have something. This is this is really a, a, aggressive. Let's see what it's activating birthing pod. Now are we gonna see another metamorph or are we gonna see like a molten tail masticore? Copy the hero again. Well, so this this shuts Garuk off. This does shut Garuk off as a as a instantly lose the game card. Mm -hmm. But um, he's dead to dismember Overing or Naturalize, right? Yes. So it's dangerous. This is like he was in a really good spot. Why does it have to? I mean, granted, he'll probably win a turn earlier this way. But why risk it? That's, I, well, we'll see. I mean. Fate, fate for, uh, fortune favors the bold, I suppose. Huh. And he's got to figure Chris didn't have the dismember, obviously, last turn. Yeah. Which is fair. You know, like, he certainly didn't have it last turn or... But there is some card on the top of his library. We don't know what it is, but it's a card. Sadly, Chris is now in the mode of trying to figure out if there's any conceivable way for him to even live through the next attack. Looks like he's got uh, a bird of paradise in his hand. He can commit to the board. He's he doesn't have the land for the brook, right? Not so four six. A and giant growth would be good enough. <laughs> so Alexander Lapping wins with his green architect deck, his architect pod deck two to one over Chris Van Meter on green white.